Hey guys, Lukeworm Mining here. Hope you guys are doing well. So I received a couple of these CMP 100-210 cards courtesy of Respect.io. Um, they're also known as BitPro to do some testing on cooling. Um, so if you don't know who Respect.io is, they are the resellers of these mining specific cards. You can find them on eBay. They got all kinds of stuff. Um, they're also known as BitPro. BitPro is um, their other company where you can send in your on consumer GPUs, so like your 10 series, 20, 30 series, your non-mining specific cards to them. They go ahead and make sure everything works and then they'll give you an idea of what the value is of them. And you can trade those in to get these mining cards. So you can get CMP cards, you can get um, those 170HXs, the AMD Instinct cards, any of that kind of jazz. So if you're looking to kind of get some more mining specific GPUs rather than the consumer hardware, because these things are stupid efficient compared to some of those consumer cards, um, this is actually more efficient than a 4090 is on Dynex. Um, you can go ahead and send your cards and get some of these for a pretty good rate. So, um, like I said, they are sponsoring this video on the cooling solutions for these ones. So these are originally meant to be in a server. These are all solid copper heat sinks on these things. They're meant to have a ton of airflow blowing through them in a server chassis. Um, and a lot of you guys are going to buy a good amount of these ones and then throw them into like an Octominer X12 Ultra or something like that. That is a server design chassis, though these are a little bit long. What I've seen people do is take the fans from the inside and put them outside of the chassis. I've seen people flip them around and do push-pull um, configurations and say one's better than the other. Um, in all honesty, as long as there's airflow over these, um, they're gonna stay nice and cool. But the reason why I designed these shrouds is I don't think that's everyone. Um, you know, I'm a small at-home miner. I don't really have the look, you know, somewhere to put a server case right now. And honestly, any of the server cases on the market right now are either really expensive or you could buy one of those Octaminers that are used, but those are V1s. They're probably four to five years old at this point. There's plenty of people that posted videos of them. You know, the power supply is blowing up, catching on fire, the motherboard's burning out or just outright quitting. Um, so I wanted to design these um, around kind of how um, these could be put on like an air bench or someone else's like case or inside of a computer case, frankly, because um, these things can just fit into any slot or you can use an expander on them. But um, some of the restrictions that I put on myself when I was making these is that these are designed to be two slot cards. Um, so keeping the cooling solution within two slots means that you can get a way higher density out of them. Um, same with the um, three card cooler that I have over there. So that can cool three cards at the same time using the one delta um, 120 millimeter axial fan. I think it's a 38 millimeter tall one. Um, that thing is a beast. Um, and that still fits in six slots. So that is something that this does have a little bit of an advantage over some of the server chassis. A lot of them have 60 mil spacing on them. So that's roughly about three slots if memory serves me well. There's some space on the sides of the card. So this gives you technically better density. Um, then you could get out of them. So if you want to do one of those crazy rigs where you have a bunch of these in a really small space, grab a couple of these, you know, nine cards, three of those. You only have three axial fans wide. Um, as you can see, that's pretty dense. Um, and honestly, I haven't had any cooling issues with those and I haven't had any cooling issues with these little single uh, 40 millimeter fans. So that's kind of the reason why I designed these. Um, I know not everyone wants to buy a server chassis. Um, so first thing I did when I received these um, before I wanted to test them out and check out and see if these coolers were going to work for them and was uh, repasting them. So these have obviously been run. These were on, you know, mining farms. These were dusty when they arrived to me. Um, they've been worked. Um, the thermal paste is kind of old, so might as well replace it. And the cool part is that there are, I believe there's some pads under here. I didn't end up replacing them. Everything, the RAM and all that, because it's HBM, is all under here. Just four screws comes off put paste all over it. You'll see there's little HBM modules around it and your center die, pretty easy. Um, screw the four things back together, you're good to go. Um, so next thing I did was I went ahead and just measured the sides on there, created a little template, designed it. Turns out I got it a little bit wrong. This side was a little bit off. Got it fitted on there, fixed the power cable. Now we're good. And then I went ahead and put it on, double checked it, and what do you know? It is blocked a little bit by the uh, card right here on the shroud. Honestly, it hasn't made a huge difference in performance on it. I did make an offset version of it. I'm going to make those files available too, but I'm not going to be selling those ones. So what I realized, there really wasn't much of a performance gain on these running the 
uh, fan to the side rather than um, just directly in line with it. As long as the fan kind of gets airflow over the center area right here, it's good enough to go. Um, and then so tried out with the 40 millimeters first. Um, they worked pretty great. Um, honestly, I ran them on Aleo like everyone else was running them on. I also ran them on Dynex when I realized that these were stupid efficient on Dynex um, and had no issues cooling on that. Um, but these things are super obnoxious. So unless you have a bunch of server power supplies anyways and you or you have somewhere that has a couple of closed doors in between you and it and you can't hear it, um, I wouldn't run these um, 40 millimeter fans though they are really cheap I think you can get like a 10 pack of these things for like 40 bucks or 30 bucks or less than that um, so that's why I designed this one no not everyone's just buying one or two cards or buying three or more this thing is still loud but it's a lot more tolerable um, it's not a high pitch screech it's just kind of loud so just wanted to show you guys what they look like kind of fully assembled and then I'm gonna go ahead and test these and kind of go over the thermals on these Oh, I did want to show just real quick. So this is with the 40 millimeter shrouds. You can see how close they are together. Um, these can sit in a two slot configuration and um, run perfectly fine. Then in my three card configuration, you can see there's this little plate right here, lines up with these. So this is what the cards would look like inside of the three card configuration. As you can see, um, once again, it would be six slots total for three cards. Um, you can get some pretty good density out of it. I'm thinking about modifying this file, making it so that you can put screws through here to kind of add a little bit more stability. I mean, they are press fit right now. They're pretty stable, but obviously the more stable, the better. And that's also kind of the reason why I like 3D printing these things um, and going through you know a ton of different revisions. You can make small adjustments and I can have a new one printed out in less than an hour. And this is what it looked like fully assembled. Obviously, we're missing a card here right now. Um, the plugs can come up through here. And honestly, I've ran it without the card in here, just blowing through it. And there's still enough airflow to keep these really, really cold, even under full load. Um, as you can see, also, there's a little bit of print shift right here. Um, the power ended up going out. And so the printer went and resumed as soon as it got power back on. And if you know anything about that, it doesn't matter how good your step control is. Um, there will always be some kind of you know leftover goo or something on there. So it's actually caused a little bit of a, an issue with the print right here. But any of the ones that I'm going to be sending out aren't going to have this issue. Alrighty guys, so as you can see, I put the CMP cards on my Xeon bench out here. Just wanted to show you guys, this is in the two slot wide slots. As you can see, they fit together, no binding down there. I'm going to currently have them just plugged into this um, fan splitter right here. Just so they run at 100% to keep these as cool as possible. You can hear, absolutely high pitched, super loud but there is airflow coming out of these. And it is blowing out of the center, so it would definitely keep those uh, GPU cores cold. Alrighty, so it is now hit about the 30 minute mark, so I think these are finally soaked in. Um, they've been running on Nexapal for a little bit here. That's not what I'm primarily mining with these cards. Usually I'm mining Dynex, but I wanted to put something that puts a little bit more wattage on these. Um, puts them at around 150, 160 watts with the overclocks that I have currently on it. Um, as you can see over here, we're currently sitting at around 65, 66C on these ones. So our ambient temperature here right now, um, I believe is around 24, 25C right now. So they're definitely within spec for temperature. Um, I will say that when I was running these shrouds, when it was about 115 degrees in the garage, um, these things were a lot more toasty. They're sitting about 71 to 74 degrees. Um, not mining Dynex, that was mining Warthog actually at the time because the new BZ miner came out. But um, they were still, I'd say, at an okay temperature. Obviously, these ancient BM cards want to be a little bit cooler, so keeping them below ADC is probably nominal for them. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and redo the test bench and put the 120 millimeter fan and set up on it. So I have this set up right now. Um, with the 120 millimeter shroud on there that takes the three GPUs. As you can see, they're lined up. They actually are on risers right now. Just the single fan back there, and you can see there's a huge hole in this right now. Um, so let's go ahead and click this guy on and boot up the board. So it's gonna get pretty windy pretty quickly here. I don't have any kind of fan controller on this right now, but there's a huge amount of airflow coming out of the side right here blowing out and honestly it, it keeps them still super cool 
As you can see, I've had the miner running for about 23 minutes on Nexa when I switched over to the shrouds on these. Um, the current temperature right now is right around 25, 26C. Um, these things are sitting at around 56C. Under load, they're pulling about 150 to 160 watts. This one's a little at 146 right now. But honestly, uh, usually I only have these things running on Dynex and other algorithms like that because these are really good for memory intensive algorithms. Um, so uh, I don't see any issue running through these cards, at least with the one um, 120 millimeter shroud. Uh, the 40 millimeter shrouds seem to do fine. What I will say is during really, really hot days like the last week, um, we had it where it reached about 110, 115 degrees C in my garage, so around 42, 40 degrees C. That was pushing the cards into the 70 mark, but it was keeping up at least on Dynex, and all you do at that point is switch to an algorithm that doesn't pull as much power. Anyways, once again, big shout out to Respect.io for sending me these cards. Um, they're awesome over there. They're really, really responsive too on email, so if you ever have any questions. Anyways, I'll take care. Should probably have a live stream coming out this week. Feel free to like and subscribe.